I'm going over a public good problem, and this will be a scenario where three roommates are throwing a catered party. It's going to be a really fancy catered party, and they each have a demand curve for the number of guests that they should invite, um, knowing that they'll have to pay for a meal, um, and the meal costs actually $20, so the marginal cost per guest invited is $20. So this party is a public good for the friends, for the, for the roommates, and they need to figure out how many guests to invite and how much each of the three people should contribute to the party. And as we can see, they have different demand curves representing different types of preferences. So Amy, we can see it's really important to Amy to have a party, um, but it's not that important to invite that many guests, whereas Carol, um, having a party isn't as important. She, she won't pay as much for that initial um, bump of having the party, but she really wants lots of guests if they have the party. So we need to think about how do we come up with um, a fair way of paying for this party and a fair number of guests to invite. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up with a total demand function. And we know that um, to come up with a total demand function for any given point on this graph, we're going to add each person's demand. So we're going to add Carol's demand on top of Bob's demand. And on top of Bob of that, we're going to add Amy's demand. So if we come up here, um, the point that's associated with this point I picked on the total demand curve is way up here. And we'll do that for every single point along the way. Now, how do you do this with um, three demand curves given to you algebraically? Well, you just basically add vertically. So the total demand curve here is going to be the price equals 300 plus 150 plus 60, and that's going to be 510. And then minus, and then we just add up the slopes on all these three people's curves. So 3 plus 1.5 plus 0.5 equals 5. And this is our total demand curve, which is way up here. Now, um, to figure out the optimal quantity, we're going to set our demand curve equal to the marginal cost, which is $20, and just solve for Q. So um, take 5Q over to the other side, subtract 20 from this side, we get 490. And this is going to tell us that the roommates should invite 98 guests at $20 per plate. Now we need to figure out how to um, how to pay for it. Who pays the most? Who pays the least? Based on their demand curves, and we can do this by coming up with a price for each person. So Amy's price, um, her price is going to be 300 minus 3 times 98. So Amy's price is six dollars. Bob's price is going to be 150 minus 1.5 times 98, our quantity. So Bob's price will be $3, and Carol's price is going to be 60 minus 0 0.5 times our quantity, which is going to be equal $11. So we can see that for every person invited to the party, Carol will pay $11 of their plate. Bob will pay $3 of, of their plate, Amy will pay $6 of their plate. That luckily adds up to 20 just like it should. And to get the total financial contribution of each person, um, we're just going to multiply each of these prices times the quantity of people that um, we're inviting. So at the end of the day, we get Amy contributing $588. Um, Bob contributing $294, and Carol contributing $1,078. So that's basically how you do an algebraic version of the public goods problem. Now, um, while I'm at it, I might as well graphically show you how to add these, um, these curves. So we know at every point past here, um, the only thing on our total demand function is going to be Carol's demand. So past this point, the, demand, the total demand curve is just equal to Carol's. Once we get here, however, we have to add Bob's on top of Carol's. So we can do that by just bumping, by just taking Bob's function, picking it up, and putting it right above here. So I'm going to draw this, and it's parallel to Bob's function because we just 
picked Bob's function up and we drew it. And now, once we get over to this point, we need to make sure Amy's demand curve is added. So we'll pick Amy's demand curve up and add that on top. So here's, um, here's that, which is parallel to Amy's curve. And we can see that our total demand curve is going to look like this. I can erase this because that was replaced. So here's our total demand curve. It's got two kinks in it. One, two, three, three pieces. And that's a public goods problem.